My interest in creative writing, I suppose, was sparked about 12 years ago when I gave up my normal job to do an HND in drama and performance, which led to me becoming a professional actor. And I began to take an interest in the scripts that I was performing, how they worked, how they were interpreted, how they were put together. And I suppose uh, that's when I thought, I'm going to have a go at writing, not necessarily scripts. I think I was keen on the idea of life writing, but as it happened, I fell head over heels for poetry, which was a real surprise to me. And I did two years at the Open University and gained my degree that way. And that's where I really fell in love with the process of writing poetry. The process of writing poetry is very intricate. It, uh, it's very absorbing. It can be repetitive. It can be long. And it can be stressful. Yeah, and Kathleen Jamie, our poetry tutor, says you should really be enjoying that process because as artists, as any uh, form of artist, we spend a long time working on the piece of writing or music or drama that we love, that we have a passion for. And you tend to spend less time with the finished article than you do with the actual process of creating it. So it's important to enjoy what you do. It's important to remind yourself when you're in the middle of all that. Yeah, this is what I've chosen to do and this is what I love. Um, so yeah, I do. I do enjoy it. And it's great to just shut yourself off and um, immerse yourself in that process. The poems I have included in the anthology, where did the inspiration come from? I put four poems in and one of them actually came straight out of poetry workshop. Uh, Kathleen had set us a task to find an object from nature and bring it in and we had to basically absorb ourselves in that and write as much as we could about that object. I found a dead thistle in my garden and I brought that in and created a sort of meditation on that, just getting down to the nitty gritty, uh, what exactly does it look like, feel like, smell like, and also the, the back history of that dead thistle. So um, um, that was something unusual for me to do. And I really enjoyed what I produced at the end of the day and I thought that was worth including in the anthology. I also wrote a concrete poem called Petal. I, I quite often write poems from words and phrases, cliches, and I like to subvert them or mess around with the cliche, mess around with the phrase and pull it to pieces and write a poem around it. And this one came from a children's rhyme, He loves me, he loves me not. And for some reason had an idea of someone who was jilted and was dwelling on the not part of that. He loves me not. And I ended up writing the phrase in all its combinations, the combinations of those four words, of which there are 24, um, writing them down and putting it into a concrete poetry, which is a poem which... Um, relies as much on its visual um, aspect as it does on the meaning or the words in, within it. Um, and it was lots of fun. And I've been inspired by Edwin Morgan and all his concrete poetry works to do that. That was lots of fun. So that went in. Um, there was another one um, called My Love Is Like. And that came from another well-known 
phrase, which is Robert Burns, my love is like a red, red rose. And I wanted to mess that around with that. And I thought, well, what if my love wasn't something pleasant, like a red, red rose? What if my love was um, a whole string of similes for something that's going wrong? A relationship that isn't doing so well. So I thought that would be interesting. And the final one that I put in is called In Appreciation of an Invisible Everyday Force. I thought I wanted to write about gravity. Just the way that we don't notice gravity, but without it, we couldn't do pretty much everything we do. So it's just an awareness of gravity. It's quite lighthearted to start off with. And as I worked on it, I introduced some more serious notes to it towards the end. I think there were some serious um, news stories at the time, and they ended up in the poem. Yeah, it was basically um, a list poem of all the things that gravity can help us with. I mainly write poetry, however, I've written sketches and things like that at home just really to amuse myself but I was really pleased um, back in 2014 the National Theatre of Scotland were doing a 24-hour live broadcast on the yes no debate and they asked people to send in their own little five minute uh, scenes that were performed live um, and I sent one in and it was accepted it was called Dirty Laundry and it was the first thing I'd ever written that anyone other than a tutor uh, had seen. And I was really, really pleased about that. I was, it was quite an achievement to perform my five minute piece. So yeah, I, th I think I'll write more, when I get more confident, I'll write more scripts, maybe longer ones. Um, and I'm, I'm interested now in having a go at flash fiction and short stories because I've been influenced by some of my uh, cohort and going to workshops and listening to their short stories. So if I start with flash fiction, maybe work my way up from there. That's another interest I have now. I've been inspired by many poets. I'll bring a few to mind like John Betjeman, Wilfred Owen, Robert Louis Stevenson, and more recently uh, contemporary poets such as Graham Fulton, Deborah Alma, Jackie Kay, Edwin Morgan, um, Tom Leonard. Edwin Morgan said, Cosmic circumstance hides in nearest ordinary things which kind of echoes this idea of let's explore the everyday and mundane. He's been a great influence on me um, with his breadth of all his styles of poetry that he writes. Um, definitely not a one-trick pony. There's something for everyone in Edwin Morgan's back catalogue. Um, so he, I suppose, is my main influence. I would really like to get a collection published. Um, not for money, obviously, not for fame, just for the satisfaction of taking on that challenge of writing a collection of my own work, getting it published, being able to hold it in my hand. Um, that would be my, my first um, ambition, I suppose. And in a wider sense, and a more long-term sense, I'd, I'd like to look at the well-being aspect of creative writing, how it's used um, in mental health uh, therapy, um, how it can be used to promote well-being and to bring communities together. Uh, I'd like to be exploring that, I think, in the future.